Welcome to the Brains Magazine podcast. This podcast is hosted by thought leaders and experts. They have all been handpicked and invited to contribute because of their knowledge and valuable insight within the areas of business, mindset, leadership, and lifestyle. Whether you're starting a business, looking for personal growth, or if you're just here to learn something new, you will get actionable advice from world-class award-winning coaches, experts, and industry leaders from over 50 countries across six continents. If you like what you hear, make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button. You can also visit us at brainsmagazine.com for quality articles, interviews, and daily inspiration. With that said, let's welcome today's podcast host. Hey everyone, my name is Kim Guillory, and I will be your Brains podcast host today. I'm a mind body coach trainer and business strategist. I help coaches, wellness practitioners, spa salons, and clinics scale their business. My business journey started in 1997 as a salon, fitness center, and spa owner. I moved into online coaching in 2012 and love helping holistic minded business owners create a sustainable, predictable, and profitable organization. This week, I am talking about hygiene. You know, hygiene, like keeping yourself clean, brushing your teeth so that people want to be around you, that kind of hygiene. Well, today we are talking about emotional hygiene or energetic hygiene. So think about this. The way that you physically take care of yourself, like you bathe so that you don't smell, you wash your hands so that you don't contaminate. Like what else do you do for physical hygiene? And what do you teach your children? Sometimes we have to not really just think about us, but what would we tell or teach someone else? And so just kind of make a list of what you do to take care of your your hygiene, your personal hygiene. And now let's look at energetic hygiene. So I want you to think about energy as moods and ways of being. Like, man, my energy is really low today. Or I'm feeling really energized now, right? That kind of hygiene. I was talking to the Boss Up Mentorship Group and we were checking in. I think it was on Monday morning. And I like to do this little litmus test or this little check-in where it's like, okay, let's get the temperature of the room. How are most of you doing today? Where is your belief? How much action are you taking? How inspired are you? Are you in momentum? So that's like checking in with the energetic hygiene. And the reason that I asked is I had been at an event all weekend. So I was like super excited and I was all committed and ready to go, reared up and you know, because I had been away and I had been like thrown into all of this momentum. And I forget sometimes that when I come back, that it's not. And so I have to kind of watch myself, especially when I'm traveling a lot or even when I'm doing coach calls. So if I'm doing a coach call and we're really like pushing in, we're talking about millions of dollars and lots of clients expanding the company, maybe opening new locations. And then the next group of people are shooting for their first $50,000. And, you know, it's like getting clear on what's their niche? Who do they help? Where do I find those people? Can you see how the energy is so different between the two? Well, energetic hygiene is being able to regulate myself or yourself. Energetic hygiene is how do you show up for a consult or for a client call? How do you show up with your partner, with your children, you know, in important relationships. Your energetic hygiene is like cleaning up anything that may be negative, that might have just a a lower vibe. It's like, what if we took responsibility for how we show up, not necessarily making other people feel a certain way because we can't do that, but how can we feel a certain way 
And how is that mirrored in the relationship and the results that we want in our business, with other people, in our money? So I kind of just made this up, by the way, you know, I'm really good at that. But I've been thinking about this for a few weeks. When when we are like overworked and pushing and things are not aligned and we're frustrated and we can't make it work, then it's like our belief say our belief system or our immune system, like our our immunity to negativity is really low. So if it were your physical immune system and you were feeling a little down, you might catch a cold, right? You might get cooties. (laughs) Well, the same thing with what's going on with you energetically. When you're thinking this will never work, I'm so tired, you know, my body is all jacked up. When you're thinking that, then you're in this lower vibration and you could get cooties. You could get disbelief. You could get contaminated with someone else's disbelief or someone else's, however, their whatever their perception is that day, because you're not on point. You're not guarded. You haven't done your hygienic practices, if that's such a word, is hygienic practices a word? So I thought it was important enough to come on here and talk about so that I can have this show documented anytime we needed to go back and check in. So for today, let's just check in and see what is your energetic hygiene point at today on a scale of one to 10. Are you in belief? And you're like, how would I know if I'm in belief? Well, are you taking action as if it's going to happen? Are you feeling excited? Are you able to envision? You're able to see who you're talking to and what's going to happen, what those results are? Because that's like a 10. If you actually think it, feel it, believe it, and you're doing it, pretty high. A one, I don't even want to get up this morning. I'm not going to work out like that. I'm not doing it. It didn't work anyway. I just assume eat it. I ain't losing weight, scale ain't moving. So I might as well, that's like a a one, one or two. It's like an apathetic, right? You just kind of like gave up, screw it. It doesn't matter anyway. I I could talk so much on this, but I'm not going to coach you. But you should come to Boss Up if you're remotely interested in what I was about to say. You should come and check this out because it's all about you. This is not about me reaching my goals. This is about how can I help you reach your goals by helping you see some of the things that you're doing that you don't recognize that are keeping you in that lower vibration, in the, that energetic pull. It's like a pull down into the swamps. Like I'm from Louisiana and I always think about, I had family in Amelia, which is near Morgan City, and there were like swamps out there. It's like really swampy. It's like the tip of all that mush. and. I think of our belief system when we're in the negative side of it. It's like we're being pulled down. It's and maybe just our eyeballs are sticking out from the water. Like we're just, or maybe our nose. We can breathe. We can breathe and we can see. But most of our being is consumed by disbelief or consumed by what we see in our environment every day. And you can't really kick out of that, right? Because there's so much weight pulling you down that even though you can see something else is possible, you can't reach it because your hands are weighed down in the swamp. Like you're in the quicksand, you're pull, being pulled down. If you understood energetic hygiene, you could change that. There is a way to change that. But first you have to recognize that it's even such a thing. And that's because the energy is so low, so heavy. It's like if you've eaten, you've ever gone out drinking and you ate a bunch of junk because you had a hangover. And then the next day you're just like, oh my God. That, okay, that's like the low end of your energetic hygiene road or whatever. Like let's just say the scale, the energetic scale. And so it's like you can't really move because it affects everything. The alcohol is literally poisoning your body. You start sweating when you start moving, right? Just so apathetic and heavy. Well, that's what it's like in the bottom of the swamp or when you're being pulled down by the swamp. It's like this underneath is just like heavy. I used to think of it as, can you tell I've had a lot of experience with this? I used to think of it like 
I have hip boots or chest waders on and I'm walking in the crawfish lake. And I just like, it takes so much effort to pull one foot out. Like I'm like, it's like, right? You're just being sucked by the, the wetness and the mud. And you're trying, you're trying to get up. You're trying to get out. You're like, oh my God, if I could just get to the levee, it'll be so much easier to walk home. Like if I can just get out of this, but you're in it and you can't run because if you try to run, you just like, you're just like the Scooby-Doo, right? You're just kind of like bald in it. And the other side of the spectrum is like, you are completely out of the swamp. You've pushed your heels down and you've actually catapulted completely out. And now you're on a beach. Like you're like at the ocean's edge and the sun is out and you're free this, it just feels amazing. You know, you're just like, you can go and be and do anything that you want. You look around and there's prosperity around. Everybody's having a great time. The kids are playing. You're like at the beach compared to being in the swamp or the crawfish lake. Uh, energetic hygiene is how to stay out of the swamp and how to get closer to the beach, closer to what you want to be experiencing. But would you guys agree that when you're in the mud, when you're in the heavy, that your brain is not even creatively giving you ideas of how to get out of it? It's so pulled down by it, so trapped by it that you can't even imagine. And so this is why I think energy drinks are such a high commodity, a high demand commodity, because People just feel heavy and sluggish and they need something. They need a substance. They need like, I need something to get me going. I need some caffeine. Like really think about what are the best sellers. Alcohol sales went up like 30% during COVID because it's like, I need to deal with this. What else do I do? Right. And so it's like alcohol and energizing drinks and caffeine and anything to change the state of my mood. And the mood is the energy. So can you see how it all comes together? Now, the way out <laughs> and the way to stay out is the same. The problem is when you go so far down, you don't think you'll ever get there. Are you guys knowing what I'm talking about? Does this make sense? Well, energetic hygiene is a like having a plan for how to get on the high end, how to stay on the high end and how to keep elevating that. Because 10 is not the end. Like it's not just one to 10. I remember fighting to be a two and a four. It, it was extremely hard for a lot of years. For those who haven't heard my story, I had a lot of medical stuff. I was on medication. I had like over a dozen surgeries and diagnoses and it was all fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, chronic pain. It, you know, it was just a lot of mental and emotional stuff. I don't think it was physical, to be very honest with you. That's exactly what led me to this work is I don't think most of it is physical. It's energetic and it's emotional. So it's what's going on in the way that we think. Our thinking is defected. And then that leads to us having a low vibe and a low emotional understanding even. It's just like so disconnected. And once I got that, brought that together, this is why my coach training is called integrative mind body coach training. It's like it's integrated. It brings those parts back together. Then we're on board with ourselves. So then we know how to get out of this. We have the tools, we have the resources, and we can increase the energy. We can actually feel when it starts to go down. So as soon as you start to like feel yourself being pulled down towards the swamp, towards the crawfish lake, towards the bottom of the crab pot, it's like, oh, 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 you, you got 13 seconds to get out of it. So there are things that you can tell yourself, there's things that you're gonna do. And I'm gonna tell you about some of those today. Sound good? That Was that a hook like halfway in? <laughs> okay, so first is to notice where are you on a scale of one to 10? Write out the number. 10 is I am on the beach. I am free. I have no pain. Everything's working out for me. Amazing life. Everything is going so well. And a zero or a one is 
I don't know if I can take one more step. And a four is like, fuck, this is hard. It's like you're doing it. You, you haven't quite got to the middle. You can see the levee, but you haven't gotten there. But the beach is way over there. Got it? And then your six and your eight is more like, all right, I know about the beach. I know how to get there. And I'm on my way. I'm already on the levee. I'm booking my flight. I'm heading that way. So it's like, can you see what I'm saying? So where are you today? That's the very first thing that you need to know. And then what are your goals? I need you to think about your future goals. I need you to think about what you want and think about what's possible. And for many of you, that's hard. It's hard to imagine because we've never seen that it can actually actually happen. And so our imagination has atrophied. It's like a weakness, a weakness to dream, a weakness to vision because, because we haven't practiced it. And so it's like when you don't use a muscle, it atrophies, it gets weak, it gets smaller, it's it harder to access. So what are the goals? What is it that you want? What can you see yourself having in six months or a year? Like what, what, what can you see? What can you experience? Maybe it's just, I want to feel like the sun is out. I don't want to feel this darkness anymore. It could be that, right? What, how far can you envision? So what are your goals? And here's the third step. And some of you are not going to like this. Matter of fact, you're going to have resistance against it. You got to go move your body. It is not negotiable. The way that you take care of your physical body is by moving it and using it. And so if you want to talk about energetic hygiene, you have to, you have to move the physical body, get on a bike, get on, go on a run, lift weights, do something. Cardio for me is the quickest access to it. Although I do love weights and I love the way I'm elevated when I do weights. Sometimes I can't get my brain to cooperate with the slow moving weights. So I have to get on the Peloton. I have to get on the bike, the rower, the, the tread. I have to get, I have to do something monotonous. I got to go walk down the road. I have to get on my outside bike, but something until I can amp up my energy. So how do you want to move your body? If you're feeling sluggish, I suggest you do higher cardio. Not like, oh, let me slow down and go do yoga. Like, it's okay if that's all you can do. I just don't see it works in elevating this as quickly as if you just start. Listen, get on your phone. You're going to sit on your phone anyway. Call someone, talk to someone and go walk down the road. I promise you, you will feel better. There is no way you won't feel better. And so first you've got to recognize. So you do the test, see where you are, check in with your attitude, check in with your mood. Number two, what are the goals? What do you wish you had? What do you wish it could be like? And number three, move. Just move at least 10 to 15 minutes. For me personally, it has to be more than eight. So I've done this long enough. I owned a gym from, I don't know, for over 20 years. And I remember when I didn't feel like working out. I, I remember when I didn't feel like waking up and opening the gym. I didn't want to get up at 4.30 in the morning. I didn't want to open the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning, especially if I wasn't going to have a full class. Like that was not inspiring for me. And so if there were a time where maybe it was the holidays and not many people were coming, oh, it was even harder, right? Because we want to show up where people are, but we don't always want to show up for ourselves. So it was like, I have to get up and do it anyway. Even though I don't feel like it, I have to overcome not feeling like it. I have to make it non-negotiable. So test, goal, what is it that I want? Can't even imagine it yet. Okay, what else could there be? What else does someone else have maybe? And then how will I move my body for the next 10 to 15 minutes minimum? And then create an action plan for the day that's going to take you closer to the goal. Super simple, four steps. Check in with your attitude, with your mood. Give it a number. Decide something that would be more exciting than what it feels like now. Move your body despite not feeling like it. Might feel like you're, you're moving in the crawfish lake with your chest waders or your hip boots. And then after you move, you're going to map out an action plan for the day according to the goals that you set. So if it's to grow your business, maybe it's like, where do I get my next two clients? What do I need to say? What am I going to create for them? 
How many people can I talk to today? But it's an, a tangible action plan of what you will do today, the rest of today, from now until dark. You're going to write it out and then you're going to honor it. Okay. So this is how you improve your emotional hygiene. I'm sorry, your energetic hygiene. Energy is the way that you feel. It is led by emotions. And there are things that you can tell yourself that get your emotions up, that get you excited, that leads into an elevated energy, level of energy. And once you like, really understand this, you'll see that you have the power to change it. Because whenever you're feeling on the low end, anything below four, you don't even think you have the power to change it. It feels useless. You feel helpless. You feel like such a victim of it. But it's because you haven't understood how to care for it or change it yet, how to elevate it. You can do that, all of us. No one can do that for us. And just to kind of bring the story in, I want you to think about a time where you were maybe out with friends or you were in a class and somebody comes into the room and they're all excited and they like you start feeling energized and inspired and motivated and you start moving into momentum and that that story someone is telling is like now someone else wants to share a story and someone else wants to and now the whole room is like starting to raise up and starting to feel fun and excited and oh my god i'm going to do it too right you got all this going on got it so that's just to show you the power of it now imagine that you're in a room and you're going to lunch and two people at the table who just left that same room are complaining and they're telling stories about, yeah, well, it must be nice to be them. And I didn't have that. And oh, yeah, it's because they're so-and-so's daughter or son. And it's because, you know, this other person gave them that. Or yeah, I'd be all that too if I had that. Just be saying that. Can you feel how it starts to lower? And you, like when your belief level goes down, your energy goes down. When you quit imagining, when you quit envisioning, when you're no longer motivate, motivated, inspired, when you're not in momentum anymore, here comes the swamp. You can almost smell it. It's so heavy. And so part of the hygiene is recognizing who you're around that's contaminating your belief, who's contaminating your momentum and your energy, or maybe who's even pulling from it, right? They're like, I just love hanging out with you. You have the best energy. And they're just trying to suck it from you. <laughs> they, just, they just want more. They want more. And then they get a little lift and then they go off. But then they don't know how to keep it. So they got to keep coming back and they got to keep plugging it in and they make you responsible for their mood. Okay. So you got to, you got to watch these things. You got to be careful about it. And you don't have to eliminate anyone from your life. You just have to recognize it. And then you have to know how to elevate, how to raise up, how to get out of it, how to maintain it. All right. I hope this was helpful that you maybe recognized yourself in some part of it. And that now you can add this to your toolbox. Like, man, I didn't even know that there was a such thing as energetic hygiene. And let me just read the definition of what hygiene means, just to make sure we are on the same page. Hygiene is the practice of keeping yourself and your surroundings clean, especially in order to prevent illness or the spread of disease. Now, D-I-S dash, E-A-S-E, dis-ease is not having ease in your body, in your mind, in your emotional system. Like, it is disease. That lower pulling swampy feeling is a disease. It is a discomfort in your, your capacity to be. Be extra careful about personal hygiene. And then it goes in to talk about that. So conditions or practices about maintaining health to prevent disease, especially through clean, cleanliness. So can you keep your thoughts, emotion, energy clean? Can you keep your beliefs clean? Can you keep the contamination at bay? Can you set yourself up to where when they start talking, you pierce your lips closed, you don't respond. Maybe you change the subject. Maybe you excuse yourself. So sometimes you might have to get out of the physical situation. If I walk through the house and the news is on, 
Like I put my hands on my ears and I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I don't hear it. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. I don't want to be contaminated by any of it. And I no longer scroll on social media because that was like the worst form of contamination. And so I get on there, I do my business, I do what I need to do. I moved like the notifications, I moved the app so that it's not on my home screen. There are things that I have done that are hygienic. <laughs> it's like, that is what I did for myself. So hope some of that worked for you. I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in growing your business, learning more about what I talk, talk about here, whether you're a six-figure or seven-figure entrepreneur, you want to improve the way you do business, maybe it's people that you work with or you want to attract better clients or better employees, better team members and partners, you should check out Boss Up. I have a boot camp that's coming up that would be amazing, an amazing place to start. Or you can come just into our Boss Up Mentorship, which is just weekly coaching. So hope to hear from you. Have a great week.